Snowy Koenigsee in Bavaria. The winter has finally arrived here just outside Berchter's Garden. We're ready for race four of the Wiesmann FIBT two-man bobsleigh World Cup competition to conclude the second and deciding heat, building on the final results from heat one. The top 20 go in reverse order to decide the medals on what has been a topsy-turvy day for action. Martin Haber with John Morgan alongside me. And John, the weather, a definite factor here today. Yeah, this Russian team came out of nowhere. They started like about 17th. And with the snow coming down, we didn't think there was any time left in the track, but still the from Russia three position really surprised everybody. Good starts, great speed on the bottom part of the track. And Nico Walter, Marcus Hockenberger, they had some unbelievable start speeds because of a six foot seven brakeman. Great leverage in that first 100 meters. But Walter, he had great speed all the way down the track. He put himself in a silver medal position to match his bronze medal he won last weekend in Altenburg. But these two guys, wow. They had F Alex Bowman. Their starts were unbelievable. His drive down the track, even better. And the guy who won the race last weekend and could win four or five in a row, boy, was he impressive with the first run. Well, because of the weather, the gaps at the top are huge. Hefty leads by a quarter second. Stulnev half a second behind. Albrecht Klammer, the young German, just out of the medals by two hundreds. Justin Cripps, winner here last year in fifth place, could challenge. And frankly, John Morgan, in this weather, anyone could challenge. We had drivers out of the top 20, making it into the top dozen. There are lots of close battles and lots of drivers like the Americans who have got a lot of work to do and will want to go better in the second heat. Outside the top 20, they'll be watching the final run. Well, it was warm and drizzly this morning. It is now much less warm. Certainly the air temperature is not plus two. It's dropped four or five degrees. An ice temperature, well, the ice was hard to keep the rain from melting it early on, and that led some freak results later on in the runs. But the prime factor now is snow. How long it remains, how consistent it stays, will have a definite play on the field. All everybody wants is it for it to remain about the same. Lamindine of Great Britain, 20th after the first heat, will go off first. They go in reverse order of their first heat performance, last to fast, down 20 to 1. So Bernd Hefty will be last on the ice, like Alana Myers-Taylor in yesterday's women's race, defending a big lead and looking for victory. She crashed out in the final run, three corners from home, still finished in sixth place, but Baird Hefty will be looking for win number two of the season here. Well, the ladies last night were record pace. Six sleds in the first run broke the old track record. We don't, we're a second off, the, or half a second, three quarters of a second back from the track record. That's, that's the reason, right there. that is the reason. It is coming down deep and crisp and even. And so, and if you're, not near the track record, you know, you've practiced at these speeds. When you have a track record or your personal best, you've never gone down the track that fast before, which is a lot of room for error. Lamindina, Great Britain, the Army Guardsman, and behind him, brand new brakeman, Toby Alubi, making his World Cup debut. Second ever start for the 100, 200 meter sprinter. They got away in 5.03 in the first heat. See, Toby's a wide guy trying to wriggle his shoulders in. Clocks. 504. Got an issue with clocks. Here's 61.1. Well, we're seeing the times on our screen. You're only getting the speeds at the moment. Lamindine can try something here. He's not going to drop out of the top 20. So a chance perhaps to just hang it out a little more. Down the bend away. 1.59. That's not bad speed. That's not bad at all. Even the snow, he was a kilometer an hour slower in the first heat. 72 miles an hour. Good lines here. Still faster than his first run. Yeah, 116.8, 72.6. That's really good speed. So the track might have a little bit left in it. Well, again, the ice we saw got harder and harder in the first well, run. That's four tenths, tenths quicker. Better. That's much better, though. I'm sure both coaches are saying, why don't you do that in the first run? But, well, well you can't tell with the way the snow was coming in and out. Yeah, definitely. Hey, you go to a horse race, you bet on the long shots because they call them mutters. Somebody's going to come from this field today, going to surprise everybody. Look at the break, but first time, Toby Olabu. First time in a World Cup race, 
100, 200 meter sprinter. Boy, the British have really recruited into their program. Yes, they have. I heard the other day there's 17 different new drivers in, in that the British have been training in the last two years. Russia's Alexander Kazyanov, second out of the start shed, expected to be among the front runners. 19th was all his time was good for. Yeah. 21st start time though, John, 5.09. That's not what you expect from the Russians. If they don't go significantly better, then they're right there. That's their problem. Well, Mel Bardis went first, and he's the World Cup leader and the best starter in the world, and he was 15, 18 hundredths off the best start. So he, he really got yeah, hurt. His start was only 11. Yeah, and he should he's be first, number one. Second at worst. So that 11, that one should have gone away. I yeah. mean, it's... Uh, so I would expect if he went, would he go in the first run? Second? No, but what is five oh nine? Five oh nine. He should be five flat, if not better. Well, Alexei Pushkarev behind him, very experienced brakeman, catching off a very experienced driver. There's the, the five flat. Five flat. Now Even that's so. They say 900's better in the first run, would have been 2700's better at the bottom. That would have moved him up to 12th, which is about normal. Still giving away nearly two ticks to the fastest starters, though. Well, that's what he, he's more of a four man guy. That's because he can't push a two man. Yeah. Decent run down the bend away. Silver medal of the four man Lake Placid, the opening event. Only two kilometers an hour quicker than Lamin Dean's British sled. Now he's pulling away. This is what you expect. He shouldn't be back here in 19th place. Luck of the draw. Usually you want to go first. Today's the day you didn't want to be in the top two or three sleds going down. Yeah, Russia's most experienced driver still practicing. He should have been a lot higher. 51.2. Eight tenths quicker. Eight tenths quicker. That says it all. And I think you're going to see some real shake up here. I think that Mel Bardis, who's the 10th or 11th place here in the first run, he's going to be the one that's going to maybe still sneak in for a medal. Well, this is where we now go back to the record books and say, how far behind has anybody ever won a medal in two-man from? There's been some weird stuff. Let me think about that. But look at the start. 900's better. Look at the energy all coming forward. Now this, real, this first curve is real tricky. Here is an exit of the S's. Perfect lines, but he's, he's a great driver. He just has a little bit more of a start deficiency in two man. He'll be good tomorrow on the four man. Well, he looks a little happy with that drive, and rightly so. You can see how much the snow is settling. It's on the umbrellas as well. Marcus Sammer last week on the brakes, this week at the front of the sled, driving his own sled. Decent start time in the first run, too. Yep. 11th best. First ever World Cup race for him as a driver with Stefan Lausager behind him. Lausager has played a lot of American football in Europe. Big boy. OBSV, the sled manufacturer, that's the Austrian Bobsleigh Federation. See, the Russians beat him in that heat at the start. Yep. And the Russians lost to these guys by 1100s in the first team. That tells you it all. Really, really disadvantage going early in the first run. But it's a winter sport. Track workers stepping in after every third sled to have a real go at clearing the snow. Now we talked about, look at the speed, way off. The woman's bobsled last night. We saw some crashes down here. Jamie Grubel in the United States. A lot of Myers Taylor. But that's where they're all going record speed. Yep. These, this is a second off the record. Nevertheless, Wet snow, hard ice, and polished runners. 52.05 in the first run, 52.52 in the second run. The Russians went three quarters of a second faster, yep. the Austrians went a half second slower. Yep. That's a disparity of over two seconds. Well, that's not just one sled's worth of snow. They're going at a two minute interval, so there's only two minutes more snow, which can make a cumulative effect clearly over a dozen sleds, but not just one sled. So that's down to drive, but Marcus Sammer makes his World Cup debut here. Not bad. Oscar Smell, uh, Oscar Skiba Manis of Latvia. Second fastest starter, only 17th by the bottom of the track. There's something going on in this weather front that's coming through Koenigsegg Bavaria that is making this a very topsy-turvy race. The Latvian shouldn't be that far down. He's not yet on a par with Oscar Smelbardis, the World Cup points leader, his teammate, but he is better than 17th on most days. On the right there is your leader, 
Alexander Kazianov with Alexei Puskarev. There's no way that Kieber Manis should be way back where he was. And he started in the 12th position when 12 to 17, 12 to 20, we saw some real disparity in yeah, the times where the track was given up. This guy, though, he had the 80s start the first round. A couple big decathletes here. Kieber Manis, he's just starting to feel his way down these tracks. But the start time, wow. 485. Now watch the speed on your left. 43-4. Next one, box score to keep track of. 62.7. Keep that in your memory bank. That'll tell you a lot of how they entered the sled, got around the first curve with speed. Nice exit onto the bend away. You can see the runners throwing up snow. He had some problems Didn't here. Didn't touch anywhere. Now maybe there's Watch. a little more grip for the runners there. It's easier to steer. 117.6, good speed. Yeah, much better speed. He had the first run. This is way better than his first track. But he's losing a little time to the Russians. Point, point 0.35 up, point 0.32 up, point 0.31 up. Not enough. He'll lead this heat. Oscar Kibamanis will move up the order at least by one. But when he figures out how to drive, this guy's going to be somebody to reckon with. Because he's the start. A couple of great decathletes. My athlete of choice in the sport. That was over a second quicker than his first run. Unbelievable. That's inconsistency, though. You can't have that. Well, those lines were not a second better. All right, they were better, but they weren't that. That's night and day. On your Schneider Heinz behind the sleds there. Look at these lines. Look at the helmets going back and forth. That's the G-force, almost 40. He gets second pressure point. He got it up a little bit above the regular drive lines. Well, 485, great start and a good drive from him. He could live in that leader's box for a while. He could do. What about Urian Veselink of the Netherlands? Started 19th, finished 16th. Aviation student, the 25-year-old, his brakeman. Eagle Brink is a business student. This is their first ever World Cup race. Coached by Edwin van Kalk, who just retired at the end of December, and Mikel Serize, who drove for France and Belgium. 5.08, that's not a bad start. Pretty impressed with these guys when they came in for their headshots. You know, they, they're, they're following in the footsteps of Edward Van Conker, the Dutch program. The Dutch, their number one sport in Holland in the winter is speed skating. But this is the second sport, a nice, nice sport right here. Well, now that's an ugly run down the straightaway. We might have expected that in the first heat. Now, unfortunately, it popped up in the second where he's going to do more damage because he's going to drop down the order. Yeah, but this is okay. This is the first World Cup. Real positive. Well, now this Eurotech sled has got speed at the bottom. Look at that, 116. That's the third best speed we've seen. He's back up to third place. Going to be in front of Lamin Dean. So guaranteed no worse than an 18th place finish in his first World Cup start. Not bad. 51.98 in the first run, 52 flat in the second run. In a field of 25 to Not make bad. the cut in the snow on his debut, that was a major victory. That's two good runs from the Dutch guys. Press with these guys. Dutch girls down there helping. They had their debut yesterday. They were great also. Good, good lines. Here comes out a little bit on the left side of our screen. Should be in the middle. That tap throws him over, so that that mistake right there was worth 20 hundreds at the bottom. Now he's got a skid going. And, but hey, World Cup debut. Yeah, and look at this weather. He is in third place, but it's Oscar's keeper Manis who leads in the deep snow. I'll tell you something for nothing. The skiing is going to be great tomorrow, but the racing weather today in Koenigsegg, Bavaria is not great. But Dorin Grigori of Romania from 21st start draw came down 14th tied in the snow with Olympic champion Stephen Holcomb. So he's not cursing the weather yet. Probably the oldest sled in the field. And the Latvians came down with the Italians and two or the three, two or three other teams about we're shaking our heads like wow. It's negative start times. But the times all the way down the track were improving. Well, Grigore was 23rd last week in Altenburg, didn't make the second hit. 
can't think the last time he did. This might be the first time. I may be wrong on that, I'm sure. Speed way off, three kilometers off to the Latvians, like you would expect. Look at the dis disparity of times. He's sled number six, which means it hasn't been swept for three sleds. Oh, real high there. Second off the pace. I mean, his disparity here, 51.94 in the first run, 52.27, so he's three tenths slower. Ahead of Marcus Sammer of Austria, so he will drop a couple spots down the order, but 19th place finish, minimum guaranteed. We saw in the first heat, weird stuff is happening in this weather. Keeper Manis could live in that winner's box for a little bit. Yeah. Well, Brakeman trying to get a big hit, leans right into the sled and then well, that wasn't really the most efficient transition hit. with the hands. Yep. Look at the feet coming down at the same time. That's good cohesion. Look at the snow there in the slide. He comes wow. off too early. And this skid here has worked a lot of time. Boy, I like to. Here's the track worker getting right into sweep. And look how much snow there is right by the wall. It's not only bumpy with the ice, but it's deep yeah. snow as well. That's like hitting standing water with your car. It just stops you in your tracks. Stephen Holcomb of the USA with Jolston Olsen behind him. They went quickly. Yep. They're Minute the lights changed, they're in the sled and gone. 504 start, very similar to their first run, 503. Now they're down to Latvich, so watch the speed, 61.8. Well, again, John, looked like Olsen was having trouble getting in the back of this yeah. BMW sled. Yeah, Olsen, they had some problems in the first run running of those start grooves. Plus two tenths right now. Needs to be perfect. Wasn't perfect in the first run, the first 100 meters. 118.2 though, that's impressive speed. That's big speed. He could find a way to get that back on the bottom with good lines. He's bringing it back. This is what Holcomb does. There we go. That was some great running down through the low level. Speed, huge. Nobody's been there. Fastest speed we've seen in the competition. He should catch him. He does. Wow. Now that's the Steve Holcomb. We've grown accustomed to knowing on the bottom part of a track with a two-man or a four-man, great speeds, because he could drive. His nemesis is he's so far behind at the start. When was the last time you saw Holcomb go nine tenths quicker in a second run? Nine tenths Nine tenths quicker. Nine tenths quicker. Not nine hundredths. Look at this line on the bottom part of Echo Vaughn. His speeds, extreme. Yeah. Look at that. Almost a full kilometer better than Kasanov, the Russian. Boy, Steve Holcomb, nice run. And yet yesterday, the track was so much quicker, the women were nearly two kilometers an hour faster than the men are. Well, next up is Cody Baskew. Cody with Aaron Victorian behind him. These guys ripped out the sixth fastest start. And that is huge for this pair. I think this Aaron Victorian, the guy they call Surf from the back, he emerged from the US trials as the best tested athlete. And I'm telling you, the Cody Basker, the little 20-year-old from Whitehall, continues to improve. And this has been where everybody thought he would, wouldn't have the positive start times. 494 again. 494, faster. He ain't little Cody anymore. He's big Cody from Whitehall. Speed on the left. 62-3 is excellent. Aaron Victorian is starting to feel his way in the back of the sled, especially in that power step in. But that's oh. not. Takes the big hit. Was it Nick Cunningham had that from the US on the first run? Now, how will that affect the speed? Holcomb 118, Maskey 115. Down. Now the question is, how many places is he gonna fall? Couple crashes in four-man practices for the young 20-year-old who improves every time he comes down the track. Better speed than we've seen from half the sled so far. He's down four spots. Gonna drop at least three. Well, that one exit, just a tenth or two of a second late in the steer of S4 has cost him four Still places. Still seven hundreds better than his first run with yep. all of those problems. Yeah. Well, you give Holcomb that start time. Holcomb gets that start time. He's up to six, seven shots better. Look at the exit here of the S's. Oh, that's where he bangs. See that? Oh, he comes out too early. Major mistake by Cody Bescu on the exit the of the four shower S's. shower of snow he's throwing up. Yeah. Blinding the fans. 
Well, Cody goes off to office. Congratulations to uh, Justin Olsen, Stephen Holcomb. Now the third of the US sleds. They were all nose to tail, weren't they? Nick Cunningham was the best of them in the first heat in 12th place. 300s in front of Baskew, 500s in front of Holcomb. Commissioner from Gresh Greeton, Oregon. There's our leaders. Cunningham, the Boise State decathlete. Paul Ryder lives in Monterey, California. A long way from home here, boy. Part of the WCAT program. Oh, that's the wrong time there. That is definitely Something wrong. wrong. Now yeah. the clocks are, watch out. If these clocks start to get affected, 62.1, that's a good speed. On our screen, the start time is 4.98. We'll go with the running clock. Yeah, 4.98, that sounds more like it. He's in front of Holcomb uh, for the lead of the race. And the Holcomb about 118 plus speed kilometers. This is only 116.5. He's gonna fall behind Holcomb too. Yeah, straight away is done for him. Same as it did for Cody Baskew. But he can still hold out or top. At least one or two spots he can fall here. Down to third, 117.3. That's good speed. Found good speed at the bottom. Still third place ahead of Kazinov, but behind Holcomb and Kiba Manis. But they're only 200 to pass, so that's hardly a surprise. He falls behind Kiba Manis from Latvia and his teammate and team Stephen Holcomb. Well, Holcomb and Kiba Manis, just 200 to pass. I mean, basically, that's one. You know, there's one time there. There's two good drivers between yeah. Holcomb and Kazanov. So Cunningham, third spot. Drops a quarter second to Stephen Holcomb. The S's, four of them. And you have, they say when you hit it, it feels awesome. When you don't, well, you exit and you slam into the wall and you go sideways. Look at these four S's. Unbelievable ride. Well, it was the straightaway that killed him though, plowing through all that loose snow. Not so loose either, it's wet, it's sticky. Now this guy was another one of the sensations of Heat 1. 20th place, Luca Schnitzer, only his second World Cup race with brand new brakeman, Mattia Variola behind him, 11th fastest. And it wasn't some kind of fluke, really nice drive lines. Yeah, but all him. he's got to do is go in that locker and find that run again. Yeah, but he went 19, 20, 21. The three sleds, the Dutch, the Romanian sled, and this sled all went in that window that you can see it's sled built by Ferrari. That window of, wow, what happened? We were all like shaking our heads. What is going on? How yeah. can these guys with the 20, 22nd best start times? 19, 20, 21, 22, all had good runs. Bad starts, good runs. Let's see what he finds on the straightaway. Holds the slide immediately. Now the speed. Takes the hit, takes the second hit. High 117 kilometers he's gonna need here. 116.4. So he's gonna lose to Stephen Holcomb. At least. Well, down to fifth place, coming on to the Chrysler. Yeah, he's gonna fall three or four places. He'll probably fall by both American sleds. Not quite as neat to run as his first heat. 115, fifth position still. But still a pretty good result. Yeah, made the cut for a start. There you go, sixth place. That means he'll be no lower than 16th position at the end of his first World Cup race of the season. A Ferrari sled red. Hey, Italian driving a Ferrari, living the dream, baby. <laughs> Exit of Chrysler. Good aerodynamic profile. Watch the back end of the sled here. Let's see if it gets airborne. Last night, all the women's sleds were getting airborne coming into here because they were going a second faster than the track record. Well, he was much needed through there in the first heat, and that's what gave him the speed at the bottom. There is Lucas Schnitzer with Stephen Holcomb, the race leader from Oscars Keeper Manis. Half the field down, 10 still to go here in Koenigsegg. Well. No commercial break here. Normally there'd be a two minute halt, but with the snow coming down, it's a hurry up offense. And that means that next on the ice is our World Cup points leader, Oscars Melbardis with Damas Dreskins. Here's their season so far. Silver Lake Placid, Gold Calgary, Silver Altenburg. And that's only their two man medals. They've won in four man as well. He leads the World Cup rankings in both disciplines. Only 10th after a topsy turvy first heat. John Morgan, what's going on? 4.98 start in the first run. I bet you he's in the 80s here. He was first man down, he's snowplow. 4.82, matches the best start. If he would have had this in the first run, 
He would have been 30 hundreds better. He'd been up the top three where he belongs. This Melbardis could spend a long time in the leader's box and still capture a medal here today. But the whole start area is covered. It wasn't snow. It was something they did wrong. No, 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 no. I disagree with you 100%. You're not. You're not going to see these two great athletes be 1600s difference at the start from one heat to the other without a visual mistake. They're human. Six tenths up now on Stephen Holcomb. This is more like the World Cup points leader. This is what. Watch how much faster he is in this run than he was in the first run. 51 77 in the first run. Seven tenths up on Holcomb. 118 0. That's great speed. 50 53. He went one second, two tenths better. That tells you he was a snowplow in the first run. Luck of the draw. He still has a chance to win a medal. That's the fastest run of the day so far. Two tenths quicker than Bear Hefty, who led the first heat. And it's more snowy now. Wow, the decathlete in the front, the basketball player in the back, two biggest guys in the competition. They blew a start time out, 482, that matched Hefty in the first run. But the lines at the bottom part of the track, he was perfect. He was like a video game. And the speeds show it, although Holcomb still had the best speed. Well, he was three kilometers an hour quicker onto the Chrysler than in his first run, Melbardis. He was three tenths better than Holcomb way, at the start, too. Way faster. So next up, Rick Opeda of Switzerland with Thomas Amrein, 31-year-old chauffeur, in the medals last weekend, fourth in the two-man, in the medals in the four-man. So he had 497 in the first run, 496 there. He went sixth. So by then, all things were equal, I believe. Peter, these sleds fly. We love saying he's a chauffeur by profession and he chauffeured himself to his best finishes ever last week, a podium in the four-man third, and a fourth place in the two-man. He's gonna need some better driving here at the bottom to have a chance, but of course, Belbardis just smoked the field. Well, seven tenths between first and second at the moment, and Rico Pedro is gonna fall somewhere in that chasm. 118, same speed as Belbardis at the bottom, but he's taken over half a second longer to get to that speed trap. Oh, he hit there too. Big hit. Fourth best time of the run, second best overall. But it's okay here. Listen, when we saw Mel Bardis and Rico Pisa coming yeah. out and they were so close together, we thought, wow, we've got a real race on our hands. And then they were just decimated by their rivals as the weather changed. Rico Pedro drops into second. If I was Mel Bardis, I'd get my clothes on. He might be there for a long time. And, you know, Pedro didn't make any real big mistakes. He just got beat by 1500s at the start by that Mel Bardis guy. And down here, maybe that's the second time we've seen him hit that left side. Two or three taps down the straightaway. But down here, he yep. makes a couple mistakes. He taps here. And then as he goes up near the finish curve, he hits again. He had a little skid going to the bottom. That long drag down the wall, that's a tenth just there. Francesco Friedrich, the two-man world champion, the 24-year-old from Pirna near Altenburg, eighth place off the first heat, an exact second off the leaders. Unacceptable for any German slider for that to be his performance, let alone the reigning world champion. He went third. Anybody in the top three sleds had a disadvantage. 91, he should go 89 here, 90. 88. Speed. This should be pretty extreme here on the left. 62, 62, 9. One of the top speeds we've seen on the exit of curve one. Good exit from S4. Three hundreds behind. Could he challenge oh, the lead? Good, no, speed. too many hits. 117. Half. That's good speed. Perfect lines here on the bottom. But 1.2 kilometers slower than Melbourne is the leader. And that shows he's dropped from 300s to 1900s back, and the gap will grow again. No speed. 17.4. Melbardis was 180. The track has gone away from the German runner choice. And he is hemorrhaging time here. Second place, but four tenths back. He still went 81 hundredths better than his first run. Yep. He was another one was at a disadvantage in the first run, running yep. third. Third out of the start shed. It did not work. But it's a winter sport, Martin. So I don't yep. mind shake, you know, shuffle the cards. Great athleticism at the start. Look at the 
energy, everything coming forward, looking to speak. Now that's weird, right? Luca there. Schnitt said, "Well, that's we a had weird a weird clock. time from him. Right, that's a weird clock. We we knew that, but yeah. uh, still here, competing in a snow globe. This he drives this over to the wrong yeah. side there. That was that was a heavy hit. Well, when the ice was soft and it was raining this morning, a lot of the drivers might have gone for a fatter rear runner. Now there's snow on the track. That's going to act like it's aquaplaning the whole time, skidding left and right." Chris Springer Canada next up with Alexander Kopacz behind him. Springer had a good first run, seventh fastest. He's not even been in the top 10 this year. Needs another good trip. Good speed, the 493 start. Good start entrance. 62-3. That's, that's almost, it's over a half a kilometer down. The German team just came down, Friedrich. Seven tenths behind, seven hundreds behind rather now, sixteen hundreds behind. Gotta try and avoid that snow as much as you can. Out of Vienna and into the Chrysler. Two Ks down on the leader. Lines there, but he still is, is way back because of the start. All good lines down through the low labyrinth. Third place. This could be a top ten finish for the first time this year in two man for the Springer. Fifth place now, 51. sixth at the line, drops eight tenths to Mel Bardis and two tenths, more. Only two tenths better than his first run. Yeah. But he started 13th. He was in that window of opportunity, as I've been calling it in the first run. Well, he was where it was still getting slower and visor. slower. Look at yeah. his visor. Little rain -X on those visors, huh? Well, it doesn't stop the wet snow, unfortunately. It's yeah. too sticky. Look at the lines. Boy, if you don't have any vision on the exit of this curve, you talk about flying blind. These lines here are pretty good. Eyes is pretty clear there. I think it just really gets wet down the finish straight. Look at the back end. Last night, every sled was airborne coming in there because they're all a second faster than the track record. Today, it's a slow track. Well, there you go. He jumps five spots or six spots. What about the Koreans, Yun Jung Won and Yung Woo Seo? Fourth fastest start for these guys. They came 10th out of the start shed. Ended up with a sixth fastest run. Now this could be a real moment for them. 490 to... probably here. A brand new Hyundai sled for them. All new livery on their helmets Ooh, as well. Big, big bump off big turn bump one. Big bump off turn one is right. 62 and a half, that's pretty good speed. Juan was 18th place at the Winter Olympic Games last year in Sochi. This is a 29-year-old aspiring driver from Korea. Boom, in the red up. Speed, nothing near Mel Barnes. Almost two kilometers down what Holcomb had. Holcomb went eight sleds ago. This looks like at least falling one place. He was charging for a medal in Calgary. Second race, didn't get there, ended up in fifth. Skipped out to Berg last week. Third place at the moment in front of Rico Peda. Good run, still a great, great result for these guys. Yeah. He's coming he on strong and he knows so little about these European tracks. Yeah, he's driving a brand new piece of equipment. Start times are five star. Yep. This lot, a lot of yeah. promise for started, Korea. Started to align those planets rather yeah. nicely right yeah. now. Yeah. They're a developing nation. They're looking good for their home Olympics. And here, watch the snow here. I mean, you get over there away from the center of the track, you're going into some snow banks. Well, you know it's like when one of your tires on your car hits a puddle on the on the road, and the one side of the car just seems to stop. That's why he was feeling all the way down. Five sleds to go in Koenigsee, Bavaria. Fourth race of the Wiesmann FIBT four-man World Cup. Little bit of an issue with the handle of Justin Cripp's sled staying out. See the mechanic working on it there. The Canadian fifth after the first heat. Martin Haven, John Morgan watching the action. It will not come out. Now, uh -oh. if they do manage they to got? force it out, how much time will they get the it clock. back in? There's the clock in front of them. Tell us how much more time they got. Well, the we clock is running there. down 40 odd seconds. So There's a minute. Seconds. This is where your coach has got to tell you, hey, we got to do this, we got to do yeah. that. There you go. Okay, now disrupt your concentration. Well, Stefan Bosch knows these sleds inside out, gets the handle out. Now they've got to hope it goes back in when it's supposed to on the release. 
496 in the first run. They were the fourth sled up. So they could go 492 here. Well, the handle goes 93. in. That's the first drama. 62-7. Ooh, that was big hit there. 62-6. So snowy there when you come out of the start shelter. It must be very skinny into turn one. And that big hit took a little speed away from him. This is the athlete, Justin Cripps, who won the race last year at Codexy. His first podium, podium ever. Was Hortons up on Melvardis from the first heat. Quarter second still in hand. And the speed, not great. Down 18, this is gonna be close. No, Vardis was perfect down here. That was late right there for Cripps. 118.6 That's speed. That is very good. This could be enough to keep him in the top five. For Just sure. gonna stay in front of Oscar's Malbardis to the line by 1100s. Malbardis is not gonna win from 10th place. Now, will Justin Cripps maybe stand a chance of getting back in the medals wow, for the second year here? He just went 53 hundreds better in the second run than the first run. Again, yeah. he was fourth guy down. Yeah, he had a good first run. That's a really smoking second effort. The international man of mystery is what he put on his bio floor. Mm -hmm. Well, he was mysterious why he hasn't done so good in the first three races. Then he comes to this track. He's got a love affair for this track because these are great lines. Right here, he gets a little late, though, in the bottom part of the track. Justin Cripps, the race leader for Canada. Four to come. Well, fans bouncing up and down as Albrecht Klammer of Germany is at the top of the ice. Two German sleds in the top four here. Can he put himself in the medals with Eric Franke, his young brakeman? They made their debut last week in Altenburg. 495 start. Speed. Boy, that was a nice, nice entrance into one. He didn't hit that bump. Didn't have the speed even that Cripps had. Tied with Justin Cripps. He was only a hundredth in front after the start. These are good lines, though. Oh, right through the snowbank. These are great lines. Speed. German sleds haven't had the speed, but this one does. 118.3, that's 73 and a half miles an hour. But Plus he three. It. He's still behind. 118 kilometers of the bottom curve. No, he doesn't have that. He's still behind, and the gap will grow. Not too much, but enough to keep him into second place. Malbardis is only 1100s behind. He's 100th in front of Malbardis, but Cripps has the lead with three to go. Boy. Still a good run. Climber's best finish ever. Yep. Second weekend of competition for the World Cup. 11th last week in Altenburg. He will be no worse than fourth Look at that place here. snow bank there. Boy, that's... What do you do? You have to go over that side of the track, but boy, he was... Look at... Look at... He's yelling about the snow bank. Yeah, well... Right. What are you doing over there? It's been snowing all day. We knew it was going to happen. Now, Brett Klammer couldn't avoid it. There'll be a top five finish guaranteed for him. Last of our Russians is the last who was on the ice, Alexei Stulnev, the lowest ranked so far this season. And he's in third place after the first eight. Here's his season. 18th, 15th, 14th medal. That's some progression, and that's what the weather has done to this race. I bet none. Crips at the bottom. Those 18th, 14th, 15th, something happened. He, yeah. he went late in the run. He went 16th right in that window of opportunity we talked about. Yeah. Start, 497, probably be 496, 495 maybe. 496, speed. 62-3, no speed, start speed. They did not get in the sled cohesively, and that's gonna reflect pretty quickly here. And he's in the red. He's behind by 1300s onto the bend away. But he was fast to the first heat on the bottom part of the track, and he's got decent speed there. Not as quick as Cripps. It's 118.6 down the bottom. That's a good run through the labyrinth, though. Will he close the gap at all? 118.2, no. Speed. Not enough, though. He's going to fall at least two places. He's fourth at the moment. Could drop behind Francesco Friedrich. Stays fourth in front of the German, but Justin Cripps in the medals.
First medal of the year, and it makes sense. He won the event last year. Look how excited he and Brian Barnett were. Alexei Stulnev, though, tops down to fourth. That means top seven, still. Great run for him. Yeah, still half the distance from the podium he's been all year. Wow, they, something happened here because they had terrible start speed after the first curve. See that little drift there? They, I, I don't know if that was what cost them, but. Might have been a bump off turn one. Didn't quite have the speed down into the Chrysler. But he had the first run. Yeah. He was like half a kilometer down. Still, he is the top there. Russian. Yeah. Top Russian bear. Two to go here in Königsee, Bavaria. Nico Walter from Altenburg with Marco Hubenbecker behind him. Walter got his first ever World Cup medal last week on home ice, third position. He's now lying second after the first heat. Look how quickly they go. That light turned green, boom, that sled was down. They're away within seven, eight seconds. Every extra second it snows could mean a hundredth, hundredth of or a two second. of a second, even a tenth of a second. 495, that's not as good a start. 498, yes it was. Speed, watch the speed they generate. 62.6 with that start time. Nico Walters. He was over three tenths up on Justin Cripps, the current leader from the first heat. He's got that advantage still. Well, look at these lines. He got away from that snowbank. 118 change. 119. First person to hit that number. Nico Walter, bronze medal last week in the two man. Way quicker than the speeds in his first run. Much higher speeds than his first run. Wow. He is tying himself onto the podium here. 119 1 in the bottom corners. Rising star for Germany. He'll take the lead from Justin Cripps with a 50.6. Oh. That's three tenths better than his first run. Yep. And that was good enough for second. Is that now good enough for gold? Don't think so. Marco Hockenberger, six foot six of them. He is a crowd pleaser to watch these lines. Little skid there in the exit. He gets away from the snowbanks. Look, everybody else is over in that snowbank. He avoids it. Well, he knew the skid was coming, Look drove away from it, and the top speed is the result of avoiding all that snow. Yeah, he, he wasn't a snowplow on the way down. Well, now we know what Bert Hefty has to do. Bert Hefty has to produce at least a good run as his first heat. It's his race to lose. Fastest at the start, fastest at the bottom, Bert Hefty and Alex Bauman. Can they do it again here? 481, their fastest start. Four, 484, I gotta believe this could be 481, 482. We've seen two runs already in this heat that have been faster than Hefty produced in the first run. Fastest start of the competition. Now watch this speed. 63? 63 and a half. Their speed, velocity at the top of the track, beyond the start time, their entry into the sled, and now his driving skills. Half a second up on Nico Walter. Avoids most of the snow, double tap, triple tap down the straight. 189, that's enough. Only this next little section, if he crashes, he could lose the race. He gets Good through here. Parent. Perfect. Speed will be great. This is our winner. 119.1, as quick as the Germans. He's stroking away to victory now. Ben Hefty claims gold for the second time in two weeks. Victory in the four-man in Altenburg. Yeah! Victory in yeah! the four-man in Koenigsegg. 50.4. That is a great run from Bad Hefty. Top draw stuff at the start from him and Alex Bauman. Makes him the man to beat now that the Tour is in Europe. Well, Hefty fourth in Lake Placid, only just off the medal table. Took a bronze medal in Calgary. Won in Altenburg. Wins again here in Koenigsegg. The snow did not affect the Swiss. And look at the form that they are in. Hefty, in some of the form of his career, said he really wanted to concentrate again on this two-man this year. He's not going to drive four-man. It's paying off. Well, Ben Hefty in the snow. A long, snowy race, not so heavy that it ruined the race. Did throw up a couple of weird little wrinkles, but he claims victory from Nico Walter.
and Justin Cripps. And it was like the first run, a great start. And like the first run, a really great drive. He came out of the start shed in eighth place. Had some of the best of the ice, perhaps until the lower reaches of the 15 to 20 group. And he certainly capitalized on any advantage that came his way via Mother Nature. Can't argue that he had no better ice than anybody else in the second heat. Still laid down the fastest run of the competition to claim victory. Ben Hefty wins by half a second from Nico Walter and Justin Cripps. Albrecht Klammer in fourth place. Big result for the young German. Points leader Oscars Malbardis in fifth. And some topsy-turvy results further down the order. Dramatic racing again here in Koenigsee. Well, now a chance for the crowd to draw breath a little and chug on a bit more glue vine. Looks like the snow is settled in for the evening here, and that could leave a very different view tomorrow morning to the one we've had for the last few days of rolling green pastures of the Berchtesgadener Land. This area is lush and verdant alpine pasture, renowned in Germany for its milk production. You need a lot of green for that, and they have a lot of green earlier this week, but the snow is arriving, and. Big snowfall in Samaritz, Switzerland as well. We hear a metre and a half overnight. They had to cancel today's four-man race. And this, this is from the Samaritz where the lake wasn't even frozen on Tuesday. And they were driving cars on it on Thursday as the temperature dropped. So we're expecting a winter wonderland in Switzerland next week. And the Alps are crying out for some snow. Season has been hard hit so far. A week of snow before Christmas was all gone by first week of January. It's been green and brown everywhere. Now everybody needs this white. They need people to believe that if they book now, there will be snow for a holiday in February and March. And for those who've already booked, they'll be rubbing their hands with glee. If they've got a skiing holiday on at the moment, there will be lots of powder tomorrow. Well, the weather as it often does in outdoor sports, uh, especially in the winter, and bobsleigh and skeleton are no strangers to that. It's a bit of an effect on proceedings. Not wildly detrimental to anybody, but did make for some interesting results in the first heat, particularly towards the tail end of the field. Some, of the, some rookies, some first-time World Cup starters, perhaps getting a second run that they really didn't anticipate. World Cup points leader Bert Hefty, his second straight win. He leaps above Oscars Melbardis of Latvia. Francesco Friedrich, the two-man world champion, lies in third position after Hefty has only been off the podium once this year. Melbardis just slips behind him. Lots of changes up and down the order after a topsy-turvy race here in Koenigsee in Bavaria. Well, our top three teams being awarded their flowers down on the finish deck. Snow driving in here. The Canadians, the Germans, and the Swiss. Ben Hefty, Alex Baumann. Nico Volta, Marco Hubenbecker. And Justin Cripps and Brian Barnett for Canada in third place. The Germans saluting the men in the yellow jackets who claim silver medal here. Nico Valta, bronze last week, silver this week. He might be a challenge to Baird Hefty next week, but the Swiss heads home to Samaritz after two standout weekends in the two-man sled. Winner in Altenburg, and in snowy conditions, romped away here. He was 2,400 ahead of his closest rival in the first heat, more than double that in the second heat. It was Baird Hefty all the way, made no mistakes on the final run to win by over half a second, his second straight gold medal of the season. Well, congratulations indeed to Baird Hefty, a very fine performance. Let's get down and hear from our top three. John Morgan is with them. Ryan Barnett, 
track. You've only got two World Cup two-man medals. You got a gold here last year, a bronze. What is it about this track and you? I really like the track. Uh, it's, it's a smooth track. I like driving through the S's and, and the Chrysler. So we have good results here because we like it. Congratulations, guys, for Canada. First World Cup medal. Great job. Now we go over to Team Nico Walter, Marco, bronze medal. Last week, silver medal and two-man. Uh, two great drives down the track. And last week, we had the bronze medal and two-man. But for us, it was pretty good. It's the third podium in a row. So it couldn't be better in the moment. You break with a great start speed. Right? Yeah. yeah, it's only my top speed is so unbelievably quick. No. I'm really slow in running without a sled, but with a sled, it's okay. Congratulations. Team FD, two weeks in a row, Biat. The Swiss like the track in Koenig City. Yeah, today was very hard. It was a tough race today, but we, we are very happy we can win here. Tommy, your speeds after curve one were unbelievable. Well, we always try our best, and then it works out. We are glad and happy. And Congratulations, great combination, great win. Congratulations indeed. Two on the bounce for Bert Hefty. He heads home to home ice in Switzerland next week as we go to San Moritz. And there is your podium from Koenigsee on a snowy Saturday evening. Don't forget, we've got the four-man race coming up tomorrow afternoon. The heat start at 2 and at 4 local time to 30 and 4 local time. Join us then. My thanks to John Morgan and to the FIB TV crew here. Thanks to you for joining us. I'm Martin Havings saying we'll see you next time out. Bye for now.